Hi, my name is Pneeth and welcome to my channel Everyday Space. In today's video, we're going to be talking about drones. In my last video, I said that I would create an autonomous drone and here I am. So I specifically, I'm doing it for my 8th grade science fair project. The project is to, to use an autonomous drone to detect plastic trash that is on streets, beaches, or pretty much anything. We're doing this by creating an autonomous drone and then attaching a camera to it. So then we can process it using Python algorithms and AI. So then the AI can actually detect if there's trash in that partic particular image or video. We then will put that data on a map so that the organizations that actually pick up trash can actually access this data and it would make their job a lot easier because they know exactly where the trash is. So over the past two months, I've slowly built up most of this drone and I'd like to give you guys an overview of what parts I used and what is their function on this drone. So let's get started. So before embarking on this drone project, I had very little idea of what drone parts to buy and which ones are necessary for this particular drone. But I researched and bought nearly all of them and I've assembled most of them here into this drone. This is the current status of it and I'll give you guys a quick overview of each one of the parts and what is their basic function on the drone. So for a quick overview, let's start with the most basic drone part, the drone frame. The frame is basically like the skeleton of the drone. It basically holds up the entire drone and every single part is attached to the drone frame. The drone frame includes the wings, the legs, and the two base plates. Basically it is like the structure and fundamental of the drone. Next let's go on to the drone motor, motors. These as most of you know is what actually powers the drone and spins the drone. Basically, when given electricity, these drone motors spin at incredible speeds, up to a thousand rotations per minute, and they basically move these propellers. These propellers will actually provide lift for the drone. They're designed to scoop up air, scoop up air, and push it underneath the drone when it moves at extremely high velocities. There is four motors and propellers on this drone and that is why the name is it's a quadcopter. Quad meaning four and copter basically meaning like a drone. There's many variations. You can have six, eight or even ten motors on this but the most basic is going to be four. Next let's talk about what actually controls these motors. You can't really see here because it's covered by this masking tape but it's called an ESC. It's basically a tiny block of electronics that is surrounded in some plastic. Basically what it does is it basically tells the motor how fast to spin. That's basically its entire function is telling what direction to spin and how fast it should spin. Now the ESC can tell that but something needs to tell the ESC how fast to spin in the first place. And the ESC is directly a wire to the flight controller. For a better view here, basically all these four wires here are wires from each of the ESCs that the drone has. They're all plugged into this flight controller. You can think of the flight controller as the brain of the drone, or like the motherboard of a computer. It handles all the computations and actually tells every part on the drone what to do, and uses all that information to send out to other parts of the drone or even back to a computer or the remote control. So basically the flight controller takes in, needs to have some sort of input, right? As many of you know, the input comes from a remote control. It's basically something that you hold in your hand, which you move a joystick and then the drone or any remote control, car or even boat, goes forward or backward based on your joystick movement. But that remote control has to transmit to something, as it can't directly transmit to your flight controller. 
So it transmits to this receiver, if you look here. This tiny cube has these tiny red antennas, which I taped to this ESC. But those antennas are actually connected to the transmitter, and it tells the receiver what the inputs are. And then this receiver is then connected to this flight controller using this wire here. That wire basically gives, the receiver gives information to the flight controller of what the remote control gave to the receiver. And then the, the flight controller reads the information, decodes it, and then sends it to this ESC, which then gives the information to the motor. That is the basic of how the information comes from your hand to these motors. Next, we have a few additional accessories. Well, the main one is going to be the battery. Obviously, you need to power the drone with the battery. Now, the battery con connects to this flight controller and to a power distribution board. You can't really see it, but it's on the bottom plate, lodged in between the top and the bottom. It's very small, so you can't really see it. But the only things connected to the power distribution board is are the ESCs. The ESCs are directly connected to the power distribution board, which this is connected to. This is basically soldered onto the power distribution board, so when the battery connects to this connector, it can power the ESCs, which then power the motors. It is also, this module is also has a wire directly connecting to the flight controller. So the flight controller is not actually connected to the power distribution board. It's connected directly to this module here. And the power distribution, the flight controller basically gives power to everything that's connected directly to the flight controller. So there's basically two sources of power here, the flight controller and the power distribution board. So next we have the GPS module. Because I'm planning to do autonomous flight, having a GPS is very important because the drone needs to know where it's going. So this is the GPS module that came with the flight controller. I basically up, up, bought this flight controller specifically because it has autonomous capability. It can basically run a software that uses this GPS and a compass to tell it where to go. Next, we have this Wi-Fi module. This is also because we're doing autonomous flight. This Wi-Fi module connects directly to your computer when you're not using a remote control to power the drone. When you use a remote control, like I said before, you won't really need this unless you're monitoring data from the drone. You'll be using the receiver's antenna. But if you're doing autonomous flight, you won't use your remote control so you'll use the Wi-Fi module from your computer. Your computer can then directly connect to this and it will have a data link. This Wi-Fi module is, like I said before, not connected to the power distribution board but is directly connected to the flight controller, which then powers it. Next, we have this video transmitter. Basically, this is what transmits the camera's footage directly to the computer, so the computer can then process it using our Python algorithm. So this is the remote transmitter that is just temporarily held together by some tape. Next, we have this mini OC OSD. An OSD is basically an on-screen display. Now this isn't necessary for all drones, but it's good to have because the on-screen display basically tells and puts on some vital information onto the image. So basically when you receive the video through this video transmitter, the on-screen display will input data onto the video. It will show like what the battery is, where the drone is, and like how, what percentage of the flight is done and how strong the receiver signal is, and much more data through this. This is not extremely mandatory because if you're doing autonomous flight, this wireless will already transmit data from the flight controller, but it's a good thing to have. Next, usually this would connect to both the video transmitter and the camera, but I don't have the camera so far, and that's why it isn't connected to the camera yet. That is the main, so as you can see, the drone is not completely done and it's still in around like 80% done. I still haven't got the camera to then use the video and then transmit it through this. The computer would then have a similar looking unit to this. It's basically called a receiver. 
A receiver also has an antenna and basically reads the video transmitted from this and then inputs it into our computer which we can then use as a live video stream. So that is pretty much the basics of all the drone parts that I have on this drone and as you can see it's not done so I'll probably give you guys another update when it is fully done and doing autonomous flight. So here you can see that after many countless hours of testing all of this led to this one moment. This is my first real trial of if the drone would fly or not and as you can see it lifted and then this happened. So it's very unfortunate because this was my first trial run and it didn't go according to plan. If you can see here, there's a tiny crack there in the middle here. And the gray stuff that you see around is I actually tried to fix it by applying some putty. And I it didn't really work because there was a crack. So I removed most of it. But yeah, as you can see, I have no other option now but to wait. I was also thinking of actually 3D printing the entire propeller. But I wasn't sure if it was going to be efficient enough and fly as well as the rest of them. So even if I did 3D print, I would have to replace all four propellers and I just didn't think it would be that worth it. And for the rubber bands, as you can see, I, have a, I put a lot more rubber bands this time and they're holding up fine now. So that wasn't really the problem, it was just that this propeller broke just a tiny bit. So after in the later testing, what would happen is the drone would always tip over and not really get off the ground because this wasn't producing as much thrust and lift as the other ones because of this tiny crack. So that's it for this video and I'll give you guys an update when I get the new propellers and when I've actually done some more in-flight testing. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.